Dear Professor, dear colleague, I'm Mamadou Mbake from IRT Gilles Verne. My colleague Rachid Ben Seda and me have the honor to present our work on the numerical implementation of fatigue coexistence model and simulation of mod 1 crack propagation of adhesively bonding composite. The present work is a part of the onshore project, which is a collaboration between IRT Gilles Verne and EDF Research and Development. The main objective of the project is about the proposition of methods for composite wine turbine blades lifetime assessment. The structures are assembled by adhesive bonding. The project focuses then on the experimental and numerical study of bonded composites. Among the challenges, better estimation of the lifetime of wine turbine blades, evaluate the criticality of defects in bonded composite joints, and to secure the operation of wine turbine blades. Concerning the objectives, we propose to develop a numerical tool for predicting the fatigue life of composite assemblies and the prediction of fatigue damage accumulation and the experimental characterization protocol. In the present contribution, the numerical methodology is only presented. It consists on the selection of a representative model and its implementation in finite element software. Preliminary simulations are also performed. Here we give the plane of the presentation. First, we'll start by giving the scope of the study, where we will talk about interface modeling and failure modes. After that, we'll go to the heart of the matter by addressing the fatigue modeling of bonded joints and the numerical strategy adopted. Secondly, the main models available in the literature will be discussed, and the choice will be done among them and will be motivated. The main constitutive equations, as well as the flowchart of the model implementation, will be presented. Finally, numerical simulation on a DCB test will be performed. Results in terms of damage evolution and toughness will be presented in order to check the consistency of the model. Naturally, we will close the presentation by a conclusion and the main perspectives of the project. The failure modes, as shown by the figure at the right, depends on the adhesion between the interface and the fabric, also on the adhesive strength. Many methods are used for the modeling of these phenomena. The more the modeling is accurate and realistic, the more the method is expensive and difficult to achieve. Here we give a brief survey on the different methods used. The continuum mechanics approach based on a criterion of maximum stress or strain or on the yield criterion or other failure criteria. Factor mechanics approach based on the stress intensity factor or energy release rate assessment and the establishment of a relation with the crack growth rate. More sophisticated methods are also used as the XFEM method. The most robust methods are certainly based on damage mechanics. The use of a continuum damage model could be expensive given the formulation of the models and the high number of parameters these models are constituted of. The cohesive zone models constitutes a good compromise between phenomenon representativity and computational efficiency. Let's talk about factor modes. These modes belong to the basics of factor mechanics. The mod is defined by the loading and crack propagation direction. In the figure at the right, an illustration of a cohesive zone model able to describe the mod 1, 2 and mixed mode. We can conclude that the mod 1 results from the normal solicitation, the mod 2 is shear dominated and the mixed mode results of the presence of both mod 1 and 2. The figures below show the standardized tests required to characterize the behavior of interfaces according to the type of the mod. The DCB test is required for mod 1 characterization. The mod 2 is characterized using the ENF test. Concerning the mixed mod, MMB test is required. Before starting fatigue analysis, some fundamental questions should be answered. Which approach to model damage and predict fatigue life? Stress approach characterized by the water curve or a Paris law that gives the crack growth evolution with the factor toughness variation depending on the second number. The second question concerns the second number that can be taken into account for the analysis. If the analysis consists on a low cycle fatigue, the full number of cycle could be taken into account. On the other hand, if we deal with the high cycle fatigue, 
a cycle jump strategy should be selected in order to reduce the computation cost of the analysis. However, the cycle increment recording should be controlled in order to obtain consistent extrapolation. Here we expose the main options for the fatigue cohesive zone model implementation in Abacus. As shown here, the UMAT and UL solutions are considered as strong from model formulation point of view, but the development of the subroutine require many efforts and time. These methods are not the best when a rapid solution is researched. The last solution is the USDFLD. It seems to be the best solution given its quick development and the consistency of the results obtained by its users, referring to some previous works, for example, Pierondi and Moroni, and more recently, Ebadia Rajoli and co-workers. The last solution is then selected in the present work. Many fatigue cohesive zone models are developed and available in the literature. Here we give a non-exhaustive list of these fatigue models. These assumptions are similar but some differences should be noted. Notably, some models have unique damage variables that takes into account the co-aesthetic and fatigue damage. As this content, two distinct damage variables for respectively co-aesthetic and fatigue damage evolution. All the models presented here are formulated with correct growth rate except the Robinson model which is based on deformation. In the present work, the model of Curon is selected. Its efficiency was proven by many previous works and investigation. The idea is to use the basic co-aesthetic cohesive zone model available in Abacus. The co-aesthetic damage variable will be completed subsequently by a fatigue damage part by means of user subroutine. The relation is done between damage variation as function of crack growth rate. This later is given by the Paris law which depends on the normalized energy release rate and the material parameter C and N. The numerical implementation is done following the flow chart given at the right. Here after we give more details about the model integration. The field subroutine uses parameters provided by Abacus to calculate the total damage. Thus, several steps flow one another. A recovery step of the data calculated at the previous increment, an initialization step in the current increment, a calculation step of all the parameters necessary to calculate the fatigue damage and the cycle jump. The damage value is after sent to Abacus as a field variable that is used to update the related material parameters. At the end of the time increment, the USDE field subroutine records the field var variables and the solution dependent variables such as number of cycles, cycle jump, crack rate, fatigue damage. The subroutine uses the UA external DB subroutine to access data calculated in previous increment. In order to assess the model consistency, a DCB test is performed in conformity with the ISTM standard. The composite parts are modeled using shell element while the bonding joint is represented by 3D cohesive element. Its behavior is governed by the fatigue cohesive model. The input model parameters are given as follows. Concerning the boundary condition, the loading is represented by the curve given at the right. The Fourier series based cyclic loading available in Abacus is used. Thus, a cyclic displacement is imposed with constant load ratio of 0.1. Comparison of aesthetic damage is done between the Abacus cohesive zone model and the implemented model. Referring to the figures presented here, the result is the same. The given curve where the damage in the two cases is represented confirms the observation. This confirms that the model is correctly implemented. Here, we present a video that gives the damage evolution under cyclic loading. As shown by the curve at the right, stiffness degradation for high cycle fatigue could be simulated in acceptable time by using the jump cycle strategy. However, the extrapolation should be verified in order to obtain representative result. The following step of the present work is the experimental validation and fatigue tests are also in progress. 
The one of validation objective is to compare the curves that represent the crack growth rate versus the energy release rate. Obviously, fatigue tests on adhesively bonded composites are very complex. The UC undergo more complex when the crack growth rate should be determined accurately for more realistic comparison. An example of DCB test is also given in the video. In the present work, a fatigue cohesive zone model is successfully implemented in Abacus. The model is tested for mod 1 debonding simulation for constant amplitude ratio. The results obtained are consistent referring to the phenomenon studied. The model simulates successfully the damage evolution under cyclic loading and the lifetime of bonded composite. Experimental tests are in progress and the model validation will be done soon. This work is the first part of lifetime prediction of composite bonded structure dedicated to renewable energy. Given the complexity of the loading imposed to that structure, a complete model representative of different fracture modes is suitable. Consequently, the integration of mod 2 and mod mixity is in progress as well as the corresponding experimental. Validation on a real scale structure is also planned. Thank you for your attention.